And it's a great thing to be under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To understand the moving and the shifting of the Spirit. And it's so important to have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Amen. Because we are not to tell God how we want him to come in and infiltrate the church. Amen. It is for us to receive and be okay with what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Even if he say for us to come in and say a prayer for five minutes and go home. As long as it's God, if it's God, I'm going with God. Y'all come on here, somebody. Amen. Because only God knows what the people need. Amen. 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 As long as you stay connected to God, you won't miss what he's saying in this hour. Because it's so important to be in covenant relationship with God. Outside the church, outside the praise and worship team. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Outside the prayer party, outside the prayer line. Amen. You have got to have a connection with God in this hour for your life. Because if you do not have a connection with God in this hour, you're going to miss something. Amen. And it might just come in your very life. It can mean, amen, that you're going to miss something so divine that you have been praying for. Amen. But so you have got to keep your ears to God's mouth. Amen. Because the things that we be thinking about, God ain't even thinking about that. That's right. So now we are in a crucial time, amen, and then where we have to, have to obey the Holy Ghost, amen, because the Holy Ghost, it is our guidance, it leads us and guides us into all truth, amen, it has to be the anchor of our soul, amen. Amen. Nothing else can come in and infiltrate as long as you allow room in your heart and in your life for God. Amen. So when somebody tries to stir you in the wrong direction, God will come in and he'll block and he'll stop it. Amen. Amen. Because your ears are close to God to understand. If God say no, I say no. If God say yes, I say yes. So that's where we are. Because there's so much deception in the land. And you got to be able to move swift. Yeah. When God say move, God ain't telling us to, to, to be slow like a snail and don't pick up our feet and move. If God said get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray, get up out of that bed and pray. Because maybe God wants you to pray against something that's trying to come up against your family. Maybe he wants you to pray against something that's coming up against the nation, against the world. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. We cannot walk in our car and we don't have a prayer right. And we don't have obey God in the midnight hour. Come on here, somebody. God always getting you out of your sleep. That's why you can't rest at night. No, don't get on Facebook time. I can't see. God is getting you up to pray. That's why you got up. He didn't get you up to go eat no cake and no cheese in the midnight hour. Come on here, somebody. He got you up to pray. He didn't get you up to call nobody on the phone and say that I'm not going to call. I'm not going to pray. He got you up so you can pray. Not that you call your best friend in the midnight hour. Come here, somebody. He got you up to pray. He's making you uncomfortable so he can get you comfortable in your life. So we can always, always, and we should never, ever try to understand what God is doing. He is requiring all of us to walk in obedience, to obey. Come on here, somebody. Because your very life is dependent on somebody else's destiny. Y'all come on here, somebody. Come on. Yes, right. Come on. Not all right. So we got to make sure that we are hearing God as a good soldier That's right. in his hour. We're laying down our will so his will can be done. Yes, and then go real quick to the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Amen. Amen. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. I think today I'm going to read this text myself because of how I'm going to be going with it. Right. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Amen. And we're going to start with the 24th verse. Amen. When you get it, I'm going to use, I'm going to use prophets, uh, 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 Jemiah's, uh, little signature. Amen. When you get it, say Jesus. Amen. So we all be on one accord. Amen. Amen. Because greatness is inside of you. Amen. Come on, say greatness is inside of me. Greatness is inside of me. Amen. But first, I must come to the knowledge there are things that need to be take place in my life before I can shoot off to the next dimension. Come on, here, somebody. Amen. Genesis, y'all got it? Someone say Jesus. Jesus. All right. In the book of Genesis, amen. Amen. Somebody say the beginning. The beginning. Where it all started. Yes. <laughs> Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Amen. Yes, Father. And the 24th verse. Yes. And it reads, And Jacob was left alone. Yes. 
and there, excuse me, and there, uh huh, wrestle a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And I want you to understand something when it's talking about uh, uh, his joint, it's talking about the shank, which is the shank is the lower part of the leg. Amen. And it said that, that Jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him. And, 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 and that means that that sinew part of his body, you know, in, in our term, is, is the tissue. Amen. It, it's a ligament, amen, that was torn from his body yeah. as he was wrestling, the Bible says, with the man or with the angel. And understand something, that when you tear a ligament or when you tear a tissue, it does not repair on its own. Y'all come here, somebody. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so the shank part of the bone, uh, it, it, the structure, it went back in. But because the tissue was torn, amen, it was never repaired. That's why he was walking around with a limp. Y'all come on here, somebody. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. And so we already know, we should know, if you have read the book of the, the 32nd chapter talking about Jacob and, and, and all those good things, amen, that, that Jacob, and, and we talked about Abraham. We know Abraham was his grandfather, amen, and Isaac, amen, was his father, amen, amen. It goes on to say, and he said, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Yeah. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Amen. He said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel for a price. Has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed? Now understand that. Understand something. Let me give you a little, 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 little history. We all know about the birthright of, of Jacob and Esau and how Jacob, amen, and his mama, his, somebody say his mother, his mama right. dearest, amen, they, they got in flesh. Amen. They yeah. they got in a, a position where they thought it was okay. Amen. To 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 scheme and, and to uh, 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 put a plot together. Amen. To 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 possess the birthright. Amen. But let's go back a little bit. It goes back. You know. That's why we have to be so careful in what we do because what we do it can fall down in our lineage. Amen. Now let's go back to Abraham a little bit. Amen. We know that God promised him a, 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 a promised son, which was Isaac. Somebody say Isaac. Amen. Amen. The promised son. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what we can ready to receive. The promise. Amen. It's okay with the blessings, but the promise is, is right there. Somebody say, my promise is right there. Right Amen. So instead of them waiting on God to do it in his timing, they got ahead of God. They began to get in their flesh. And they began to get in their emotions. And emotions would mess you up every time. Come on, hit somebody. Yeah. Amen. Come on here, somebody. So it was kind of twisted a little bit, which brought on a little kind of conflict in the home. Somebody say conflict. Amen. Amen. When you don't seek the Lord or you don't wait on God, you can bring conflict in your own home. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Ain't nobody got to bring nothing in. We can do it when we do things outside right. of the will of God. Amen. 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 But then Isaac showed up because there was the promise, amen, with, with Abraham and with Sarah. Amen. 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 And, and in the midst of that, you know, God, their name was Abraham and Sarah, but because they messed up, Amen. With, with with Isaac, I mean with uh, Ishmael. Amen. God had to come back and change Abraham, Abraham's name to Abraham and Sarah's name to Sarah. Amen. Because God said that 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 the promise was coming out. The firstborn was coming out. Uh, the promise was coming through Abram, Abram. So he messed it up. So God had to change his name so that Isaac can be the first son of Abraham. That's right. Yes, God. So God had to come in and fix that situation. Somebody said, God, fix my situation. <laughs> and so when Isaac was born, amen, you know, it kind of skipped, you know, a, a generation, you know, where, you know, he didn't bring no, uh, uh, he didn't bring no story up on the family. Somebody say, it's a story up on the family. Amen. <laughs> God gave me this message about two weeks ago, and I, and I was wondering if he wanted me to preach today. Amen. Somebody say, today is the day. Amen. And so it skipped a generation, amen, of the maneuvering and the plotting uh, and getting the emotions, amen, until it went on to old Mr. Jacob and old Mr. Esau, amen, they was born. Somebody say Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. Amen, amen. Now watch it, y'all do know that they was in the mother's belly at the same time. They were twins, right? Yes. <laughs> Woo! Come on here, somebody. Amen. Even though they looked the same, they wasn't the same. Amen. Amen. 
Come on here, somebody. It's going to always be a night and day with a twin. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. But then, you know, we have to be careful because that spirit, it jumped, it jumped a generation and it came over in Jacob. And now it became a little bit stronger than it was before it was in grandfather. Somebody say grandfather. grandfather. I'm going here with something. I'm going here. I'm going here. Now, when, when, when Jacob, he wrestled with the angel. Amen. And because he had gone on for years. He went on about his life. And he began to do things and everything. But it came to a point where he had to face all the mess that he made. Amen. Now, let me give y'all a title of this message. God's got a hold on me. Amen. And so, after Jacob, somebody say, after Jacob. I got some listeners this morning. Amen. Amen. After Jacob <laughs> decided it was time to go home, amen, he came to a home to realize that I got to face the mess that I made. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because before he could get blessed, he had to face the situation that he made at home. Come here, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. A home it's not a home when it's a mess. Yeah. It can be a house, but it ain't no home. Yeah. And why I always told when, when the, the, the home is where the buffalo run, right? Yeah. Not when it's messed up, tore from the floor. Yeah. But then Jacob, he had to come to a point, amen, to realize that I have got to face this situation. Amen. He sent gifts, amen. He, he did all he could, amen, to, 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 to send gifts ahead, to let Esau know that I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and, and, I, I, and I understand what I did. But what the thing about it is that God had already promised you what Esau thought he had. Amen. And see, what we have to do is, that sometimes we can be so impatient. And we begin messing up things. We begin to just find ways to, to get things if it don't come in our time. Come on here, somebody. Amen. But when you wait on God, I guarantee you, everything that he promised you is going to manifest. Why? Because he got you on his mind. Yeah. He already knew your destiny. Yeah. And what God was saying, can I just give you a lame turn? What's really being said? What did he say? Get yourself together because I got a nation coming out of your belly. I got great work for you to do. I need you to get yourself together. So, you know, old Jacob, you know, old Jacob, you know, he he played the game trouble. Old Jacob playing the game trouble. Look at that. Just his shine is one of me. His name, every time you look around, even though God's hands were still upon him, there were still things about his spirit that God needed to clean up. Y'all know you still blessed. Come on here, somebody. All of us got flaws in here. It doesn't mean the hand of God's not upon your life. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We just can't be dealing with that and, and, and continue with sin because there's a difference in flaws and it is in sin. And so, we, so, so Jacob, he kind of got a taste of his own medicine. Yeah. And then, you, you know, he had the worst. He thought he was going to get himself the wife that he, he really wanted. And he found out after telling all his heart out, just pouring out to the woman that was the one he chose. And then he found out that, that, that I got a taste of my own medicine. Amen. And instead of him looking at himself, he looked at Laman. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And say, Laman, you trick me. That's right. But you know, they always say that karma is something else. That's right. You never get it the way you dish it out. That's right, God. So he never ever came to himself, even in that to even say that I just I got played because I played somebody. Amen. See, until we can, can allow ourselves to be accountable, y'all come on here, sir. Accountable for our own actions. Yes, Lord. Speak it, Father. God cannot do what He needs to do or wants to do in our life. Yes, see, we see the hardest thing for some people, some people to do is to say, I'm sorry. Yes, you know? That's the hardest thing that some people can't do is say, I'm sorry. Yes. It doesn't matter how you say it, just say it. You can say it the long way, or you can say it short. Amen. 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 Sorry will get you, will promote you in the spirit when your God is sorry. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. That's why a lot of people that's coming to God, they're not really sorry. They just want his stuff. Yeah. Huh? 
A lot of people saw her because they got what? Coke. Right. Mm -hmm. But their mindset still have not changed not to do it again. Right. Right. And see, think about it. Yeah, sometimes we have to let people kind of calm down and, and, and let the things die down. You know, because sometimes you have to wait, you have to wait a minute. Especially if it's something that you have done that have affected the next man's life. Right. But when God get a hold of you, God say you've been running for too long. As a matter of fact, some people will never plan on saying they're sorry. Right. But when God get a hold of you, you're going to have to do something. You're going to be or you're going to break. Come, 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 here. come here, here. Let me show you something. Jacob finally realized that I can't stay in Laban's house all my life. Put them there. Put them together. One of them going to go around me. He finally realized that I have got to face the mess that I made. Come here. If you truly be told, all of us made a mess somewhere down in our life. And the mess that we made, it affected the next man. And some of us made a mess and we didn't even realize that we was messing up somebody else's life. But when you know that you made a mess, come on here somebody, you can't bypass your mess to be blessed. Because God has greatness upon your life. So we have to come to the terms that if I want the things God has for my life, I got to clean up the mess that I made, the mess that I left behind. Because baby, it's a, it's a stinking mess. Amen. That's why we have to be careful how we talk to people. We have to be careful what we do. We have to be careful what we say to our children. You have to be careful what you say to your spouse. You have to be careful how you handle one another. Because nowadays, people got all kinds of problems. Come on, put it around me, daughter. Yeah. People got all kinds of problems. And you might not be the source of what they've been dealing with, but all they need is you to push that button. Come on, so push that button. Yeah. Put the best together, daughter. Have you ever been around somebody that said, if they just push that button, yeah. I'm going to bust them in the face. Yeah. If they just push that button, I'm going to cut them. If they push that button, I'm going to knock them out. If they push that button, I'm going to slap them. Amen. Why? Because people got issues. Yes, that's right. All right. And see, Jacob, he did not know. He didn't know the mindset of Esau. Because it's been a time they hadn't even seen one another. Y'all come here, somebody. Yes. But even though, put it around The belt represents the mess that's holding up your destiny. You're wrapped up. You're chained up. Because when you think about it, come on, man. When you when you think about it. It's always in the back of your mind. Exactly. What, where, when, how. Uh, I should have did this. I shouldn't have did that. Mm -hmm. I could have did it a better way. Mm -hmm. It's always in the back of your mind. Yes. And true enough, some things we cannot do, you know, we can't fix. Yes. But then there are situations that we know we need to take care of. Yes. You see how I look at that? Look at that belt. So look at, look, look, look at, look at this belt. <laughs> This tall belt represents all the mess that's hanging out that you need to take care of. And we can literally see it. We won't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And just when we think that we're going to go forth and other without, no, you sit down, son, because you're going to pull me back. <laughs> just when we think that we're going to go forward, well, it'll be all right. You looking at the mess that you need to clean up. God got a hold of you. You can't go nowhere. Because you got to face the mess that you made. Huh? Amen. Amen. Just when you think that you got it all planned out, just when you think you was getting ready to leave town, God said you can't leave town with the mess that you left behind. Because it's going to follow you where you at. Come on in, somebody. And so when God begins to use you, he, can't, he don't need nothing to follow you that needs to be cleaned up because there are souls that's tied to your life. Amen. See, he's, he's strong. No matter, no matter how hard I pull, watch this. Because he God, I can't get who can get away from God? Nobody. 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 So Jacob said, 
okay, well, I'm right then. Jacob didn't want to let go of me. He said, don't let me go. Because Jacob was coming to the realization. All right, well, I made, can I just bring it down? Let me say, all right, then. Okay, all right. Well, 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 well. If you don't bless me, Lord, I can't go forth in my life. Amen. God, if you don't do what you need to do and make me clean my spirit up. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Change my mindset. Amen. Give me a heart of flesh, oh God. Take out the stony heart that I won't be coming in crafty. Whatever your spirit is, God, you can't bless me outside of my mess. God, do a work in me. Amen. So you can bless me. Amen. Because God changed Jacob's name. Yes, he did, Lord. So he asked, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no longer will your name be Jacob. Your name is Israel. And you know why God had to change the Israel? Because it was too much mess tied up with Jacob's name. Y'all come on. Too much. It was too, it's, it's just too contaminated. Come on. Because when people see you, they're going to see the Jacob, but I want them to see Israel. I want them to see the 12 tribes of Judah coming out of your nation. Come on here, somebody. I need them to see what I really called you to do. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So Jacob didn't even know he was birthing out a nation. That's why when we begin to go a little bit too far or we go off, God comes in and chastises. He come in to rebuke and to correct. So we can get back on the right path. Because God know the plans for your life. Right. Jeremiah said so. For he know the ways we tell. He know the plans that he has for our life. It is up to us to realize that we can't make a move because God got a hold of us. Yeah. We must acknowledge him in all our ways. Yeah. And he won't direct our path. Yeah. Right. And you know something? We never, we would never know how God was going to really do this thing anyway because Jacob and, and Mama and Dears, amen, they got it made by the history. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you had it nowadays where you have parents plotting with their kids against fathers and sons and, and vice versa. Yeah. The, the mother and the, the father against the children and the sons against the fathers and the sons against the, the mothers and the mothers against the daughters and all that stuff. We got that stuff going on now because it brought division in the home. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It brought conflict in the home. Right. Only because it was done outside of God. Amen. But when Jacob began to realize, I can't act like Jacob no more. I got to act like Israel. Amen. Because there's a nation birthing out of me. There's a lineage coming out of me. And I can't mess up this time. You can't afford to mess up this time. Amen. You got to stay in the word of God. You got to stay on point with what God is doing in this hour. Amen. It's time going in circles. Amen. Same old, same every year. That's right, God. Going in the same old, same old pattern, like a rocking chair. Back and forth. Rocking chair. Just rocking back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. And nothing being accomplished only because we're not lined up with the will of God. But when you line with the will of God, you'll begin to see change. Yeah. You'll begin yeah. to see your life taking a turn for the better. Yeah. Because you've been doing it your way too long. You're not getting no good results, are you? Amen. Same old results. Yes. But when God get a hold on you, two things going to happen. Either you're going to line up or you're going to be destroyed if you rebel. Right. And that is not God's will for any of us to be destroyed. That's right, Lord. God's will for us to live a prosperous life. Yes, I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health. Yes, but even as your soul prosper. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, ain't no lack. I wish about all you prosper, Father. Yeah. And be in good health. Jesus, yeah. as your soul prosper. Holy Spirit, three and three, ain't that? I, 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 nothing is lacking because they work together. Right, Y'all understand the concept? Yes, Lord. So allow God to catch a hold of you. But whatever it is you need to clean up, get on your face. And ask God to help you deal with it so you can move forward. Amen. Because your past is just what it is. Your past. Your past. And looking back will make your neck hurt. Yes. You don't have no eyes in the back of your head. When I hear people say I got eyes in the back of your head, what do you have? Unless you're a two-faced person. Amen. And that can, go, that can go two ways. Right. You can actually have somebody look. Connect to a human behind me, Brothers. Turn around. 
That's the only way you can have eyes behind your head. You got somebody else doing it for you. That's right. And if they stand behind you, if they got eyes, if you got eyes behind your head, then that means they need to get away from you. Because they in the back of you, you moving forward. They looking back. Would y'all come in here, somebody? So tell me, they say, neighbor, God's got a hold of you. Let him keep holding you. Because there's greatness inside of you. And if I were you, I'd be like Jacob. i hold on till you bless my soul. Let him do it for you. Come on, say, let him do it for you. Let him do it for you. Come on, stand to your feet. Because then, when you desire to go in the wrong direction, God comes in and he reminds you that you can't go nowhere because I got a hold of you. I can't do what I want to do because God got a hold of me. I'm just, that's what you're saying. That's what we're saying. God, you got to repeat after me. <laughs> this for yourself. Lord, I want to do this, but you got a hold of me. And by you holding me, you got great plans for me. Because you holding me, mean that somebody is connected to me. <laughs> because if God got a plan for your life, trust me. It's all about souls. Because yes, everything we do, it's all about souls. Yes, Paul was Saul at first. Yeah. Yes, God had, like she said, God had to change Saul's name to Paul. Yes. Because whenever he went somewhere, those that knew him knew him by Saul. Oh. But then there was times, I'm sure, that Bible don't tell everything. But I just believe that there was times when he went in places that nobody knew he used to be Saul so they could receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come here, somebody. Man, good at bringing up your old name. Oh, yeah. Y'all get it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They used to bring it up what Diane did. Yeah. But they can't bring up nothing but apostle preach the truth. Amen. Live for Christ. Father God. So as long as God got a hold, you can't go wrong. You won't go left. That's You'll right. stay to the right. When an old man try to show up again, because you can't bring your old man with your new man. Your old man, it must die. Because some of us have come into Christ but we still some messy Christians. We still want to apply whenever it's convenient for us to bring up what we used to do to make a situation where we want it to be. And that's not the will of God. That's right. So otherwise you step back into your old garments when your new garments look better. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And the only way God won't have a hold in your life is you don't let him. That's right. Amen, Lord. Help us, Lord. Amen, Jesus. Because he will, he will give us what? Choice. That's right. So Jacob chose to be blessed. To be blessed. Thank you. Because think about his life. He wasn't free to really move around. Because he was in fear of what might happen. Because he knew what he left behind. But when he got free, God mended that thing. Yes, yes, and when God free you, who the son says free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. Yes, they are, Lord. So stay free today. Let God keep his hands upon your life. Amen. Thank so you can receive oh, yeah. what the enemy been towing you around and tossing you around like dice for years. And and because in the dice game, you eat do what? I don't know what's right. Is it 7 and 13? 7 and 11. 7 and 11. Yeah. 7 and 11, you win. But we know there's other numbers on the dice. Yeah. 
And some people never win because they're flipping and they started flipping and they ever had a thing. You're going to win this time. Throw them dice, throw them dice, throw them dice. You're going to win. You, you're going to win and call crap out. Crap out. That means you lost. You can crap out. Aren't you tired of the devil crapping you up? Yeah. Get on board with God. Let them keep a hold of your life. Amen. And I guarantee you'll see great results. Thank you. You'll see the best results. Thank you. Don't ever allow yourself to settle for the best result. You want the only result. And the only result is Jesus Christ. Because many of us, many of us, all of us, have applied a good deal to our life. And it became an ordeal. That's right, Lord. Then we was looking for God to give us what? A new deal. That's right, Lord. And we had just waited for God for the only deal. Because we thought what we got in a good deal was the best deal. And it ended up being the worst mistake of our life. That's right. Yes, it was. So this time, inquire of the Lord. The Bible said, knowledge him in all our ways, we shall, he shall direct our path. Because I just believe if, if, and I'm not trying to write the Bible here, so I'm just going to label to her. I believe that maybe if they had to just inquire the Lord about the birthright, you never know how God would have did that thing. But God had it like that for a reason. He allowed it to go like that for a reason. For us not, for us not to trick up for what we need when we just go to God and get it for ourselves, amen. amen. We ain't got to do no trick, no manipulation, no lying, and no cunning and crafting it to receive the things of God. All we got to do is wait ourselves the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And when you wait on God, your life will be a whole lot sweeter. Your life will be a whole lot happier. Yes, it will, Lord. Anybody here that do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, come now. Come now. Let me tell you something. Many people be looking for prophecies and all that stuff. We can't prophesy unless God deal with your spirit on your mess because I, I, I never have. I've said this for years. I'm not the type of prophet. I'm not the type of prophet that's going to prophesy your house of God and money job, hood, and wife, and, and, and your life is messed up to the floor, God gonna deal with your spirit, because he wants you to come out, so you can be blessed the way he 